good evening, uh, Liebschens. There was an article written in response to the Oscar ceremonies and, among other things, Jared Leto's Oscar victory for playing a trans person. Uh, this article, which has appeared in a number of places on the internet, asks the rhetorical question, are all transsexuals drag queens? And then goes on to say that they aren't. After reading less than half of the article, um, the question come to, came to my mind, why aren't they? In my opinion, every trans person should try drag at least once, if for no other reason than to decide firsthand whether they like it or not. If they don't like it, so be it. At least they know. Just as a white person cannot comment with firsthand knowledge on the life of a black person, a trans person with no knowledge of drag performing cannot comment on it firsthand. Trust me, it involves a lot of work. Drag can take on, it can be as much or more work than the actual nuts and bolts of transition, in fact. If you're any good at it, you have to learn your song. Some people have the mental capacity to learn more than one song at once, and I envy them, and develop a performance, or know when you don't have to. You have to decide on a costume and makeup scheme that will make your performance of a particular song more effective, as well as other, or build or otherwise lay hands on whatever props you want to use, like pyrotechnics or canes or, or whatever. Why should someone who is willing to put in the time and effort effecting transition of changing the gender which society perceives you as then eschew the efforts involved in a quality drag performance. Drag is performing, after all, with the entity seen on stage being different from who the performer is in real life. The degree of difference is up to the performer, him or herself, with some people being very happy with the difference being huge, and some people being very happy with the drag characters more or less themselves only intensified. In both extremes, and a legion in between, are equally valid. A drag queen who's any good, and there are only a few who are any good, but lots who aren't, uh, knows the reasons that they get up on stages to entertain the audience, to give them a reason to come to the club and see the queen and not watch the hockey game or go to the comedy club. And the quality of your performance plays a big role in how effective you are and how good a performer you are. Many drag queens are gay men who use their performance as a way to meet people for later romantic liaisons. They, these tend to be the most fishy, the most attractively female queens on any stage. Some of these individuals are tremendously talented performers as well. I know a few of them. <clears throat> if that is your reason for performing, that's your business. But the working queens, those who are there to entertain the audience, don't deserve to be categorized in the same way. Don't assume that everyone on stage is a homosexual and looking for later companionship. At its heart, drag performing is fun, and not one performer would do it if it wasn't. There are a thousand and one ways to make money, so the often considerable monies a drag performer can earn, can earn, I've had as much as $80 for a four minute song pass through my hands at a charity show, money isn't their, their sole motivation. Drag queens are paid, tipped, like strippers in small denomination bills. You get more tips in the United States because the United States still uses one dollar paper currency. But you can earn more money in Canada because the smallest paper currency, the $5 bill, north of the 49th parallel has a greater face value. It's very bad form to tip in coins with the possible exception of the Canadian $1 or $2 coins, the, that currency. There are two types of shows. Charity shows when you don't keep the money you earn. Uh, I've raised money for cancer research, AIDS relief, and even political campaigns. And standard shows where you keep the money you earn, which people tip you. There are some hybrid shows where the performers keep their tips, but the cover fee of a percent or a percentage of the bar sales or even the 50-50 proceeds go to whatever cause is the focus of the night, and the audience usually knows this. That's why they come in the first place. These shows, you can see some mm, questionable performers. Many trans people are upset because Jared Leto played the transsexual uh, character in the Dallas Buyers Club and not a transsexual actor. I've covered this ground before, but basically maybe there weren't any transsexual actors who could play the part. If they did drag, the performers themselves would know. Uh, there are a lot of transsexuals, especially male to female ones, who get very angry when they assume that all male to female transsexuals are assumed to be also be drag queens. I've never met anyone who assumes that a male to female transsexual is also a drag queen, and I've traveled rather extensively. I'll perform anywhere they'll let me on stage, so there's that then too. So if I read this right, we're okay to publicly advocate for the rainbow community and to be the face to the world of pride festivities. But if a drag, a drag queen forfeits her transsexual status, if she has any, 
the moment she accepts her first tip. Is this fair? Basically, drag queens are slaves in heels. We can fight the fight for the LGBT community, but not be part of it. Except as some kind of homosexual and a flamboyant one at that. Mm. <laughs> I personally know drag queens who are both male to female and female to male transsexual, straight people with three children and a wife, I may add. Uh, theatrical actors, plain Jane actors and actresses, some of them were preparing for a role, and even one area rep for a makeup company who used performing as a way to say, see what you can do with these products? Okay. Um, I've mentioned the term of fish, spelt with a PH and not an F. Uh, and a fish is the stereotypical hyper-feminine drag queen, and they are but one type of drag queen. While each queen's style is uniquely hers, there are some broad categories. When one leaves aside the type of queen who seeks to look and act like a female celebrity. Uh, Cher, Madonna, Marilyn Monroe, and the late Joan Rivers are popular choices. Uh, there, is, there are these kind of female impersonators. There's goth drag, dark colors, and gloomy imagery, baby. Uh, skag drag, where there's some kind of a male attribute uh, a present, like a beard. Um, splatter drag, which is blood, blood, and more blood. That's the Grand Wignall written large, folks. Um, Drag specific to a musical genre, such as country or opera, uh, the latter of which is ideal for our heftier compatriots, and thousands of others. Uh, so don't assume that all drag or drag queens are the same, and don't assume that all drag queens are transsexuals, because the truth is more complicated than that. Okay? Uh, there really isn't any reason why a transsexual cannot do drag, even just once, and the high-minded disdain for drag many put forth has another name, arrogance. Okay? Uh, drag is a type of theater. Even if you don't like a performer's song or act, respect their efforts and the performance they're doing. They've tried, after all. How many can say that?